have this third part of you that's called a spirit. And you are a spiritual being with just a temporary body. The spirit part of you is the, is the part of you that is eternal. You're, you're, you're eternally, uh, that is, that's the eternal part of you. The, the Bible calls the soul and the body, it groups those two categories together a lot of time, and it just calls it the flesh. The flesh. So, so here's, here's the, what I'd like to do in this series, is, is I want us to go on a detox of not just the body, not just the body. And we're going to talk about fasting in just a moment. Yes, there are some benefits of fasting, of detoxing your body, and there's a lot of good studies and stuff about it. But the, we, the, there are some things that we need to detox. Some things get, it, get in our spirit from time to time that we need to, we need to detox from. Okay, there's some toxic things that get into our spirit that need to be detoxed and removed, stepping into the new year. There's some, there's some toxins that sometimes attach themselves to our souls, in our emotions, in our mental capacities that we need to detox from uh, this year. And this is where fasting comes in. This is why fasting is so important. We begin the year always around here at Discovery. We've done it for the three years that we've been around with 21 days of prayer and fasting. 21 days of prayer and fasting. That is starting today until 21 days till, till three weeks from now on a Sunday morning, we'll, we'll end it. And this is, in, in different pastors, when we launched Discovery Church, they told me like, hey, I don't know about that, Jason. I don't know if you should you know, go there that quick with a new church. You know, you gotta, they're not ready for, for that deep. And, and I, just, I disagree. I think what you started on, you're going you're gonna to continue it on. And, and what the foundation of our church, we need to be able to go deep. And so today, and in this series, you guys, is I want to go a little bit, I want to go deeper with you in your Christian walk with Christ. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to give you patty cake Christianity for the next four weeks, is what I'm saying. Is that we need, we, we need, we need a little bit of a wake-up call. We need a little bit of, a, of some shaking up. We need to detox ourselves from some things. So, so this is why a, a, a fast is so, is so cool and so great, is because it, it, it uh, diminishes or, or pushes aside the flesh, the body and the soul, what the body and the soul want, and it strengthens your spirit, man. So, because if we're honest, a lot of us, a lot of us in this room, your spirit, man, that spirit part of you is not the one that's leading your life. It's not strong enough to. You're, a lot of us are led by our soul. That we're led by our emotions and our feelings. We do what we want, what we like, what we feel like doing. We say, I, you know, we do what we feel or where our heart leads us. And, and so a lot of us are led by our soul. Some of us are maybe led by our bodies. Where we're, we're that our bodies are calling the shots and telling us what to do and what it craves and what our bodies want, and and this is this is the important concept of fasting is because what what it does is it diminishes the the flesh, the body, and the soul, and it strengthens the spirit man back to a place of dominance in your life, so that you can lead from your spirit instead of your soul, your your flesh, your 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 body, and so we're gonna ju- go on a journey. And I hope, that you, I hope that you go on this with me. That we're, I'm doing it, our leaders are doing it, so many of you, you do it every year. Whether you're new to Christianity, or you are a, a, you've been serving God for a long time, I really want to challenge you and encourage you in this series to take part in this 21-day journey. You know, fasting isn't a new concept. It's not. It was a very, it was a very big thing in the Bible. It was, they did fasting all the time. It's mentioned 75 times in the Scriptures. Fasting. Okay, and, and, and so I wanna, today what I want to do is, is to teach you some of these concepts. I want, I want to I do Bible study with you a little bit to give you the importance and the understanding of fasting as it relates to your life. You're a Christian today. You're a follower of Christ. This is important. I would love, maybe it, it's, it hasn't been um, that important or a lot of, in a lot of our lives, but I want to bring fasting back to a place of like normalcy to the Christian walk. Because it was. It was the pattern of the early church that they fasted and they prayed consistently. Now, now I want you to, now we're going to fast and pray. That's what we're going to do. We're not just going to fast. Look, if, if you just want to fast, you don't need 21 days of prayer and fasting. You need Jenny Craig, okay? You, don't need, you need a diet or something. This isn't a diet. We're not going on a diet plan. Yeah, there's going to be some benefits, I'm sure, that our bodies are going to get in check and some good things will happen there. But this is not a diet plan. This, we're going to seek the face of God, church. 
We're going to press into God. We're going to have prayer from Monday through Friday, from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And it's a sacrifice, and it's going to hurt a little bit. But we're going to, we're going to come here, and we're going to have a, start off with a 10-minute devotion. And then we're going to have individual prayer, and then we're going to come together at the very end and do some corporate prayer. I'll be here tomorrow leading that first devotion. And, and, and I'm inviting you to step, to step into a deeper walk with Christ. There is more. How many believe that? There is more that Christ has for you. That there is more that He wants to show you, that He has for you. And I, and I hope that you take this 21-day journey with us. Today what I want to do is lay a foundation of, of uh, at the beginning of our detox series uh, of fasting. And I want to give you some understanding about that. But then the next three weeks, we're going to go on, a, we're going to detox our spirit, soul, and body. So the next message, I'm going to be talking about a spiritual detox. And what, and, and what are the things that may be affecting and have, and have attached themselves to our spirit that we need to detox from? That's next week. And then we'll do a soul detox. Talk about our emotions and, and what we need to detox there. And the last one will be a body detox. But we're going to align our entire being, our, our bodies and our souls and our spirits, and we're going to get them into alignment at the start of the year to begin 2017 and bring it into alignment to God's Word and to God's will. And I'm telling you, you do that. If, it's, if this is your best year spiritually, it'll be your best year ever. I, I promise you that. If you align yourself with, with God, it can be the best year of your life. But let me give you some, some scriptures about how important this thing called fasting is, you guys, this discipline. Jesus Himself taught it in Matthew chapter 9. Are you okay with us doing a little bit of Bible study today? A little bit different. We're going to do some Bible study, okay? Matthew chapter 9. This is important. I really want to bring, I want discovery to be a little bit different. Like we just, we just, we act different kind of Christians here, okay? Then John's disciples came and asked Jesus, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples, they don't do that. They don't fast. You seem to be mixing it up. You're changing that. Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn, and that's himself, he's calling himself the bridegroom, while he's with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them and Jesus was there was a time where he died and rose again and ascended to heaven he said then they need to fast you see right now I'm with them they don't need to fast but when I go they need to seek me they need to fast they need to seek my face and it became a pattern of the early church and if you don't know much about your bible the acts is the book of the bible it's a historical record of the early church and it was the pattern of the early church uh, a common practice of them. Look at just one instance in Acts chapter 13. It says that while, the, while they were worshiping the Lord and, say it out loud, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit spoke to them. And I mean, do you want that in your life? Do you want the Holy Spirit to speak to you? We need that. We need the voice of the Holy Spirit in our life. And it said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And look at this. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So this was a, a common pattern of the early church. And by the way, it wasn't for, just for corporate things. Like the church entire, corporately, we fast together. That, that was part of the fasting experience. But there was also personal fasting, like an individual fast that you would go on. We see that happening in the Apostle Paul, where he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he said, in weariness and in toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, and in fastings often. Paul says, I went on personal fast. E even the early church, you guys, the, a lot of the church leaders had a practice of fasting. John and, and Charles Wesley, who's, you know, they, they wrote most of the amazing hymns of the early church, and the founders of the Methodist church movement uh, John and Charles Wesley, they advocated for fasting two days a week. Um, every week to keep the flesh under control. I mean, that's, that's huge. We, how did, what happened? We got so far removed. I mean, so this was a discipline that existed that I, I just hope to recapture. I hope to recapture in all of us because you'll see how powerful it is. And I want to I show you that today. How does fasting work? How does, how does fasting work? A lot of people think that fasting, they have this mis misconception that it's like some sort of penance. Like, I'm going to suffer. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go without because God, you know, I'm going to inflict a little bit of pain and suffering on myself to get closer to God. No, no, no. God doesn't want you to do that. Suffering will come all on its own. You don't need to do it for yourself, okay? That's going to come. That's called life, okay? God does not want you to inflict yourself with suffering 
in pain. That's not what fasting is, is about at all. Fasting, again, it's about, it's about asserting the, the rightful place of your spirit man to the place of leadership and dominance in your life. And, and, and to stop giving way and room to let to the, the, your soul and body and your flesh call the shots in your life all the time. Doing what it wants. And you're, you're, you're subject to your soul. You're subject to your feelings. and subject to your appetites of your, of your flesh. Stop. That's what fasting does. Fasting brings that stuff into order again. So, what are the different types of fasts? Let me, let me give you, there's, there's a lot of different types, but there's really three different categories. And I want to give you the three categories of fasts today. Um, take notes with me if you're, if you're writing notes. There's three different categories. Number one is the complete fast. A complete fast. That is, our, it's called a total fast. It's, it's like eat nothing, just drink water. That's what, and, and sometimes it's like you, you, some people include juices in that, but it's a complete no food kind of fast, which by the way, let me, let me tell you, this is possible. This is doable. Some people, you know, this is like, no way, I'll start. No, you will not starve. I mean, you can, I mean, always, always can, you know, take your medical conditions into, into, you talk to your doctor, if you have medical, you need to look into that stuff. But can I tell you something? People aren't dying from fasting, they're dying from eating. Right? Come on, somebody. It's, it's doable. I've done, I've done multiple three, four, seven day complete fasts before, and it's, it's doable. Some people do the whole 21 days. If, if you don't do a lot of physical exertion, you can get away with that. You can. You, studies show you can, you can survive up to 30, 40 days without anything but water. Again, you need to consult your physician. That's not everybody. Different, you guys are different health. You guys are at different health and different medical conditions, but that is doable, but it will hurt. Your body will cry out. It will. You'll think you're dying is what will happen. That's what happens. It's, it, you're like two hours into the fast, you're like, I'm dying, I'm dying. I need, I need. And it's, just, it's a terrible feeling. I'm telling you, when sugar leaves your body for good, or caffeine, come on, caffeine leaves your body for good, it's a terrible, you know why? Because we're addicted. Let's be honest, we're addicted. That's why it hurts so bad and that's why that thing needs to be put into into subjection a little bit every now and then to say uh-uh you ain't calling the shots i know you want it but you ain't, you're not having it no not for this season uh, uh, my spirit man is going to lead the way for now thank you very much get out of the way that's a complete fast i promise you if you detox it'll hurt but it, uh, a- after three four five days it'll feel good Maybe that's not the fast. Maybe not, that's not the fast that God's calling you to do. There's another type, and that's called the partial fast. Some of you are like, whew, come on. Give me another category, Pastor. The partial fast may be yours. It's, it's, it's like you do the whole 21 days. Like, do the 21 days, but just fast like certain meals. The Jewish custom was they would fast from sunup to sundown. They, they did that often, sunup to sundown, so they would have their dinner, and they wouldn't eat again until dinner the next day. And so for those of you that have a lot of physical exertion, you, you do a lot of physical activity that maybe, maybe you can't get through the whole day, what you might do is have a big meal, big big breakfast, a big hearty breakfast, and you don't eat all day until the next morning at breakfast time. That's called a partial, a partial fast. And the last one, probably the most popular one right now, is what's called the Daniel fast. It's one that we do a lot around here. We encourage you to do that, whichever one really, but we have information on all these fasts and the Daniel fast, the food items that are on there, online it's it's because daniel in the book of daniel in the old testament in chapter 10 which we're going to read later in the service um, he basically got rid of all these basic foods and and so he's you're still eating all the meals but you're not eating uh in daniel's case no meats sweets or breads and so you would just it's just fruits vegetables and nuts it's it's kind of a healthy so you're going to eat you're just not going to eat any of the stuff you like or not any of the stuff that you want. You're going to deny your body those pleasures. Um, in fact, I, I, we're doing this with our kids. If you want to kind of teach your kids this discipline as you're raising them up, and, which is really good. I think our kids, you, I don't want to get in trouble, but our kids are so undisciplined now. We give them what they want, I think, uh, probably a bit too much. And, and so, so I think it's a good discipline for them, to, for them to get their body and their soul under control because I think that's ruling a lot of our kids, if I can just say that. It's ruling 
their bodies and souls are ruling their, their life. And amen, a couple people agree, but that's okay. I know you, I know you know it's true. So, so what we're doing with our kids is we're telling them, look, we're praying and fasting, and, and this is, we're doing it for 21 days, and, and what you're fasting is sweets. We told them, just, that's what you're fasting. You're, you're gonna, no, no, so no sweets, no, no sodas, no candies, no, no none of that stuff. And, and so they don't like us much right now, but we're going to teach them. <laughs> we're teaching them something here. And, and it's, it, this is doable, you guys. This is, this is very doable, and I want to invite you in this journey, and it will help deny the flesh, man, so that your spirit, man, can be made more alive. And here's the part that I'm really excited about all of this, these 21 days, and that is, this is a declaration of dependence. And that's the title of my message today. A declaration of dependence. And some of you are like, well, that sounds familiar. You're probably thinking of the declaration of independence. Okay? Which, which is good. Independence is good for nations, especially when those nations are, are, are being you know, oppressed by, like there's, there's other nations or people groups oppressing them. So in our case, we were oppressed we were, uh, and then we, we needed to assert our own independence, which is, it's good for nations, but let me just tell you, that's not very good for you, okay? And this is society's trend. Listen, don't, I, don't, you don't want to get to the place where you, your feelings are calling the shots, and you're doing everything that your feelings, and you all, oh, whatever you feel, whatever your heart leads you to do, you don't want to get to that place, because listen, I'm trying to help you here. In 2017, if you let your feelings lead the way, it will not be a good year. I'm telling you the truth. If you, if you lead your life by your feelings and what you want, it will not end well for you. You'll have sex with that girl. You'll have sex with that girl that, because you, you'll want to. You'll, you'll, you'll lie. You'll cheat. You'll manipulate when no one's looking because you want to and you, you need that. You want that. And, and you, we're not le- you need to be led by something higher than your feelings. We need to be led by our principles. Not our feelings, but by our principles, we need to follow something that's higher than our feelings. And we cannot let our bodies and our souls call the shots in our life in 2017, you guys. And the, the good news is, though, that when, you, when you're dependent on God, He helps you do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you can do without Him. Can I hear a good amen? Yes. And that's why, I, that's why I fast. It's my declaration of dependence. It's God, I need you. I can't do this without you. But it's not, only, it's not only a dependence, it's also a declaration. See, when you fast, you're saying something. When you, when you enter into a period of fasting, it is declaring, God, I am focusing on you. You are declaring something as you fast. And I want to teach you, I want to, again, I want to do a little Bible study with you. I want to give you five, really it's about six of the, in the rest of your notes, the fasts that are in the Bible, there's about nine total fasts that are in the Bible, and each fast is a different declaration. It's a different we're intercession of what we're declaring for God in our life. I want to give you five of them. I've combined two of the fasts in the Bible, so it's actually six of the nine fasts that are there. But I want to teach you what to declare in your fast time. And this is what we're going to declare. We're going to declare these five things for 21 days. We are going to declare some things to God and some things over our life and some things over 2017. Are you with me, church? This is what Joel says in chapter 1, verse 14. He says, Declare a holy fast. Call the sacred assembly, summon the elders and all who live in the land into the house of the Lord your God. So starting tomorrow, 6 a.m., we're going to be here. We're going to be here um, having prayer. 6 ends right at 7, so you can go on with your day. But we're going to come into the house of God and we're going to cry out to the Lord. And we're going to declare, we're going to write them down. I have five of them for you. There's five things that we're declaring over these 21 days. These are the five different types of fast in the Bible. Number one, write it down. We're declaring revival for our lives. Revival for our nation. We're declaring revival. That's what we're declaring, revival. I'm telling you, America needs God. America needs God. And I don't say that to sensationalize it. I say that as a, as, as a statement of truth, a statement of a need, a declaration. We need God. 20, 30, 40 years ago, we would be ashamed of the things that are commonplace now. Commonplace of things that maybe we even have allowed into our lives and things that we have been able to look at or things that we've been able to operate in with our own hands and with our own omission. It would be things that we're ashamed of 40 years ago. We need God. We need a revival. We need to repent. 
In the Old Testament, we see this fast show up in 1 Samuel. And Israel was being led by a, a prophet named Eli for a season. And Eli was not a fasting type of guy. He, was, he wasn't a faster. In fact, he didn't seek God at all. The Bible says that Eli was a fat man. And, and the Bible intentionally says that, not, not to degrade or to humiliate Eli. or to, No, 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 that's not. But in the Bible, fatness is associated with indulgence. It's associated with, I'm going to eat it, eat it, eat it, have it, have it, have it, do it, do it, do it. I'm just going to consume it all and live an undisciplined life. And so that's, 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 Israel was in a mess because Eli just fed himself and just was so self, selfish and never sought God on behalf of the people. And they were in a mess. And though, then Samuel takes over the office of prophet in 1 Samuel chapter 7. And it says that Samuel said to all the Israelites, if you're actually going to return, if you're going to, if you're going to change some things up, if you're tired of the indulgence, if you're tired of this, you know, the, the, the effects of that that you're seeing, of turning from God and just living for yourself and consuming it all, so if you're going to turn to the Lord with all your hearts, and I hope that you do, church, I hope that this year you just kind of, you take an even deeper step, you need revival. If you need it, I'm declaring it, you guys. Then rid yourselves of the foreign gods. The foreign gods that you've allowed into your life. And you can fill in the blank there with whatever God that is. The God of food. The God of internet. The God of, of football. Come on. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. But, but just don't, don't let it become a God to you. Okay? And some, some of you are like, well, Pastor, that's easy for you because your team sucks this year. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But I would gladly exchange the burden with you. I promise you. Just, just don't let it, don't let those things, don't let those, and, and the, he says the asterisk, and commit yourself to the Lord, and serve Him, say it out loud, serve Him, only you guys, I like this, I, I, I like this, and I like that, and I want to enjoy a little bit of this though, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to let Facebook become a God to me, I'm not going to let social media become a God, some of you that maybe need, you need to add that to your 21 days, some of you need to fast that thing, because it's become all consuming to you. You check it too much. It's the first thing you look at when you get up. It's the last thing you look at before you, before you even say, I love you, honey. Good morning, honey. Good morning, kids. You're checking statuses and posting. and, and some of you need, It's become all-consuming. And that thing needs to fast. You need to put that thing aside for 21 days. I challenge you. And he will, look, what, look what will happen if you do this. He will deliver you from the hand of your enemies. So what do they do? On that day, they fasted. And there they confess, we have sinned against the Lord. We're going to do that over, over these days on behalf of our nation. We're going, to re, we're going to repent of abortion. We're going to repent of the murder and the racism and the immorality and the divorce and all the crazy things that are happening in our country every day. We're going to seek the face of God and cry out for revival. Did you know in 1863, Abraham Lincoln, the President of the United States, declared a national fast so that we could seek the Lord our God. You can look at it. Look it up. That's the language that he used. The nation declared a fast. And then, and then right after this fast, on the heels of that fast, what came some of the most prosperous years that our nation has ever seen. That God responded when we turned to Him and sought His face and repented of our sins. That some of the some of the most creative things came in that season after fasting. The inventions that came in the United States during that time. The financial blessing. I think it was Russia that sold the Arctics to the United States for like two cents a square mile. That's a good deal. I mean, that's a good deal. There was just blessing and prosperity. Why? Because we turned our face to God. Look at Second Chronicles says 714. If my people, you know it, come on. We know it. Let's do it, church. If my people who are called by my name if they would just humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, just, just put it aside, then I'll hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land. I'm declaring revival for our nation. I'm declaring revival for you in Jesus' name. Revival is going to visit your life and visit your family in Jesus' name. Here's the, here's the next scripture we're going to study, the next type of fasting, and that comes from the New Testament. And, and number two is, is a declaration of freedom from bondage. That we're declaring freedom 
from bondage, and I'm talking about that area in your life that you just can't overcome, that it just, it just keeps coming back, you know, it just keeps coming back and tripping you up. Year after year, it's still the thing. It's still the thing in your marriage. It's still the thing in your, in your, in your life. It just, it, I'm talking about that area of bondage. And if you're like most Christians, when you got saved, it was, I mean, you didn't even want to sin anymore. You just, you fell in love with God, and He did an amazing work in your life. If, if you're like most Christians, that happened to you. But if you're also like most Christians, what I've found is that I've never met a Christian that doesn't have a stronghold. Does not have that one thing in their life that just, man, it's hard to, to just let go. It just, it, just, it just keeps coming. It just hangs on. The Bible calls this a besetting sin. That's just there. It won't let go. In the New Testament, the disciples were praying for people and they were seeing miracles left and right. Left, miracle, miracle, miracle. It was happening. For, but then, until one day they met their match and, and they prayed for this guy, and he didn't get healed. And so in Matthew chapter 17, they came to Jesus privately because they were kind of embarrassed that it didn't happen. And they're like, they, they privately came to Jesus like, hey, why, why couldn't we drive out this thing? Why was that one thing holding on to this guy? Why was that one thing? And Jesus replied, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Jesus said, oh, no, 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 those, those, uh, this guy, that, you're dealing with a stronghold. You're dealing with something that has a strong, it's a stronghold in your, in your life. And chances are, you have a stronghold and it won't let go. Please listen to me. Everyone up here, eyes up here, listen, listen. This is the year. This is the year in Jesus' name. There is freedom over that bondage in Jesus' name. I'm declaring that freedom this year, once and for all, freedom over the bondage of pornography in Jesus' name. Freedom over bondage of addiction, of alcoholism. Freedom over the bondage of tobacco. And freedom over the bondage, that, that stronghold, whatever it is, that freedom in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, there is freedom. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You can speak the name of Jesus into that circumstance and with authority receive victory, you guys. Freedom over bondage. And I'm not just talking about addiction freedom. Some of us need emotional freedom. We're going to talk about this in this series. Some of us need emotional. That, that, that you deal chronically with depression or anxiety or different disorders in your emotion. This is the year. This is the year. Freedom over bondage in Jesus' name. That can happen. It can happen this year. That besetting, that stronghold. It didn't... It doesn't have to be that way. This is your ear. I'm declaring freedom over depression in your life. Let me give you one more scripture in this point here. Um, the great Elijah had this great moment where he defeated the prophets of Baal on, the Mount, on Mount Carmel. It was an awesome victory. And then he, he just soon after that, he turns away and, and, and he hears Jezebel just threatening him and, and, and he gets de depressed and scared. In 1 Kings chapter 19, it says he got up and he ate and drank. He strengthened by that food. There was one time he had food. He ate and then he traveled 40 days and 40 nights. He was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. And look what happened. There he went into this cave. He spent the night. He separated himself. He fasted and he separated himself from something. Maybe, maybe some television, maybe some, maybe some social media. Maybe, maybe we need to just get some of those things out in our life and just... Hear from God, look, get into His Word a little bit more. Get into the, the prayer closet a little bit more. He separated Himself, and look what happened. And the Word of the Lord came to Him. Now I show you that because what happens a lot of times in the middle of your fast, God, God's Word will be spoken to you, and that is the power of your deliverance right there. It's in the middle of a fast, you're going to get a Word from God, and it's going to have the power to deliver you. And that's why I want you to stay these 21 days and... And God will speak to you, and I'm telling you, you're going to find freedom over that bondage. That depression leaves you forever in Jesus' name. Here's the third declaration. We're, de we're going to declare this for 21 days. And while we're here every morning, Monday through Friday, we're going to declare these things. Every day, you guys, we're declaring, here's number three, blessing over trouble. Blessing over trouble. Trouble is that area in your life that's, that's just in trouble. Whatever the, It could be financial trouble. It could be marital trouble trouble it could be um your kids might be in trouble maybe you're burdened over a loss of a relative uh whatever it is there's something that's keeping you up at night it's troubling you it's trouble 
And for this, we're going to study Ezra, what Ezra did. And, and I don't have time to kind of tell you Ezra's story, but basically Ezra was charged to take 7,500 pounds of gold and 2 million pounds of silver from the city he was in to transport it to the city of Jerusalem. But what the problem was, where he had to travel through was there was a whole bunch of thieves and bandits. And so he in Ezra chapter 8, verse 21, he proclaimed a fast so they might humble themselves before our God, he said, and ask for him for a safe journey. Look at this. I'm praying for this for 2017. This is my prayer. I'm praying God and fasting for a safe journey, not only for me, but for my wife, for us, and for our children, and for all of our possessions. I'm praying that. I mean, I love this verse because I'm praying that for our family this year. You know why? Because trouble's coming. Trouble's coming this year. It's, it's going to come. That's life. There's gonna, trouble is going to come, but you can have blessing in the midst of your trouble. You can have blessing over the trouble. That's what we're praying for. And I'm, my kid, I just feel like, like led even more now to pray for my kids. My kids are getting older, and I'm praying for them more and more. Some of you that have kids, I just, man, what kids are exposed to now is just, is just crazy. It's crazy. You kids that are in here, any, any junior high, high school, my goodness, if I, if I had like the exposure that you guys had, I, would, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know who I would have become. God bless you, kids. God bless all the kids in here and all your kids. We need, we need the favor of God. You need to pray for your kids. God, I pray for safe protection as they leave our house and go out into that school. And as God protect their friendships, that they're the right influences, and, and the teachers that they're saying, guard their mind with truth, God. You need to be praying that over your kids. This is a corrupt and weird world we're sending them into every day. Blessing over trouble in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, you need to pray and declare blessing this year over trouble. Do you believe that? Do you believe what I'm saying, church? Here's the fourth one. We're declaring wisdom for my future. We're declaring wisdom for my future. And, and every year, I, I, at, at the end of the year, I do some reflection, just like a lot of you. You reflect on... 2016 and what was accomplished what was done and maybe what was not done and maybe where where things got off track and 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 for me i do that i and i set some goals and i write some things down and and and, and it's a good time for me to kind of readjust my life and 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 i be honest with you there's some readjusting that's needed i need to be recalibrated in some areas and i some some areas of my life that got a little bit went off track i said no it's it's that no that it, that's not where i want to be and i need to bring some things back into alignment but and i made some lists and made some goals and i'm making but i'm not i'm not completing that list and here's why and i really hope you haven't completed your list either is because in the middle of your fast you can get the mind of christ in that situation and some of you need the mind of christ you got you got big decisions coming your way this year do i take that job do i quit this job do i marry this person do i move to that city do I, do I, do I, we need, we need the wisdom, we need God's wisdom. And so during this 21 days of prayer and fasting, I hope you haven't set the course of your entire year and your goals without first coming before God and saying, God, I need supernatural wisdom. Set my course, God, and then I'll set some goals. But I need you to speak to me, God. Speak to me. Give me supernatural. We need God's wisdom. Most of you know the story of Paul. When he got saved, he was called Saul before he got saved. And in Acts chapter 9, it talks about that. Uh, he was on the road to Damascus. He was on his way to crucify or to kill Christians and throw them in jail. And then suddenly God visits him in a flash of light. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go to the city and you will be told what you must do. For three days he was blind, and he did not eat or drink anything. He went on a three-day, nothing, total fast. And during that time, God said a man named Ananias. It says, then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hand on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, he sent me to you so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately... Something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he was able to see again. I'm telling you, God wants to open your eyes during this period. He wants to, he wants to show you 
some things and give you a vision. Of some, this happened to me several years ago in our, when we did our first fast as a church. And we did 21, 21 days, just like we did and we're doing now. And during that time period, God showed me some pictures and gave me some visions. And he showed me what I'm seeing now. One of the pictures he showed me is this. What I'm seeing right now, God showed me the picture of it. He gave me the vision. There were some things that God showed me as well that I, don't, I haven't even spoken here from this stage because you guys will either think I'm crazy or prideful. And so I'm like, I just, I'm like, like Mary, just treasuring it in my heart and going, okay, God, all right, Lord. And, and, but I'm telling you, God wants to show you some things as you seek His face. Don't set your course before God shows you some things, okay? Let God show you some things. We need God's wisdom for the choices that are coming our way. We need His wisdom. You know, and you know why? Because not every opportunity that comes is from God. Look, every, you, and all of us can look back at some different choices we made and some opportunities we took that we said, man, we shouldn't have took that. We need God's wisdom, don't we? We need supernatural wisdom to give us discernment because not every, the enemy can give you some opportunities and trust me, he is going to give you some opportunities this year. There'll be some opportunities, but maybe it's going to take you out of your ministry. It's going to take you away from your family. It's going to take you away from the house of God. It's going to take you from, it's going to just, it's going to rob you. Not every opportunity is from God. We need God's wisdom for the choices that are coming this year. Here's the last one. Number five. That we're declaring victory over my enemy. That's a, we're declaring victory over my enemy. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, and studies would show that almost 60% of you don't know this. There was a Barna, re, Barna did some research and there was a study that was done that said that almost 60% of American Christians don't believe in the devil. Look, that doesn't, that doesn't make him less real. And it doesn't make him not pick on you any, any less. He isn't like, oh, they don't believe in me. I'll go somewhere where I'm wanted. No, that's not what he does. He's like, oh, you don't believe in me? God, this is easy. I can mess with these people all I want. They don't believe in me. Look, whether you, look, the devil is real. You have an enemy of your soul. And look, he's going to do everything he can to steal, kill, and destroy you this year. Happy New Year. Praise God. You have an enemy. And he's got, I'm telling you you, you, you have an enemy. And that's what his job is. He just steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible says that we can stand firm against our enemy and that our battles are not against ISIS. Our battles are not against government authorities. Our battle is not against finances or bosses. Our battle is, is in the heavenly realms against the powers of darkness and wickedness, you guys. Rulers of darkness. And we can use the name of Jesus and overcome and have victory in Jesus' name. Victory over the enemy. And I want to close with Daniel. Daniel, Daniel's fast in Daniel chapter 10. A lot of you I know are already doing that. That's great. Daniel chapter 10 says, In the third year of Cyrus, king, king of Persia, and this is huge, I want you to see this, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. I'm telling you, there's a war coming. It's happening already in the heavenlies. There's a war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At the time, my Daniel mourned 21 days. That's why we do 21 days of prayer and fasting, by the way. It's kind of based off of Daniel's fast, and that's a primary one we do. It's not the only one. You, you do as God leads you. 21 days, three weeks. I ate no choice food. So he ate, but he didn't eat the stuff he liked. He, Daniel, Daniel, he did the Daniel fast. No meat, no wine, touch my lips. And I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Then... At that time, as he was praying and fasting, war was happening in the heavenlies. There was war. Now I'm telling you, there is a war right now. And as we are entering into a season of prayer and fasting, you need to know there's an enemy and there is a spiritual battle happening. War is taking place in the heavenlies. And again, verse 18, He who looked like a man touched me, he says, and, and gave me strength. And that's what I'm praying for you, church. I'm praying that you would be strengthened. I know what you're facing. That's why this, this means so much to me in this season uh, that, we're, that we're entering into, in this series of detoxing our, our mind, our body, and our spirits. It means so much to me because I know what you're facing and I know what you're going to face. I, 
I feel like a lot of times, as even I'm up here on the stage, I just, I can, I can sense some things sometimes, very often, that, that what you are dealing with and what a lot of you are struggling with. I want you to trust me. If you, if you, if you take this journey, if you with me over 21 days, God will give you victory over your enemy. He's going to give you wisdom for your future. He's going to give you blessing over trouble. He's going to give you freedom over bondage. We're going to have revival in us, in our church, in our city, in our nation, in Jesus' name. If we seek His face. We need to seek His face. Let's pray together.